these are my top five suggestions for how to make the front of your house look really pretty from the street. So if you're looking for ways to add immediate value and street appeal to your home, then this video is for you. Hey guys, it's Rachel here. I'm a licensed and registered builder and home renovator. And one of my services that I offer is I go out to homes to give people advice on what to do with their homes. So typically they're a 45 minute meeting and people just ask me questions and I just give my ideas and advice. And of course, one of the big ones that I get asked a lot is about street appeal, how to make your house have a real presence from the street. And so I, I find that I'm often repeating myself, myself um, each time. And so that's why I thought I'd put this video together for you. Um, in addition to that, I'm always getting asked questions about my home. Um, and so I thought that I would combine the two um, and um, show you the front of our house. Um, I'm dressed up like this, not for the video. We're actually um, on our way to a wedding. So I just thought I'd take the opportunity to film this video. So I live here um, with my husband, Simon, and our son, Benji. Benj, Benj. Hi, son. He's already in his pajamas because he's going to be home alone for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> um, and so here's my top five tips. Number one is, is to really have a very marked front entry area. And so you can achieve this in a number of ways. Um, for us here, we've done it by having a, a beautiful custom front door, which is painted a bright color. Um, and we've also got, uh, come up and I'll show you. So you can see that we've got the front door and it's marked by these two posts here and a set of stairs. So it's very uh, recognizable where the front door is. So many homes don't have a clear point of entry, um, but it really does add a lot of value if you can achieve that. So you can do it a number of other ways as well. If you happen to be in um, planning stage, design stage of your home, and you don't already have um, a structure at your front door, I would recommend that you do that. Um, like a little gabled portico, uh, they look really, really beautiful. They're just a nice built structure right at your front door and they um, just add a, a great, great look from the street. Or also you could do stepping stones as well. Here it doesn't quite work because the front door doesn't lead straight to the street. But if you um, did have a block that allowed that, then you could perhaps just put some stepping stones straight to the street. I've done that on a number of my jobs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These earrings are huge. <laughs> this uh, this e hole, one night when I was out in the city one night, someone ripped my earring and I've got a long slot now. <laughs> it's really gross. Um, and these ones, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the night they kind of like ripped through my entire ear. I'll probably edit that out. <laughs> Here's a hot tip. If you're worried that your husband won't let you paint the front door, do what I did <laughs> and paint it while he's at work. Uh, I started painting this one afternoon at about 4 p.m. and then about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, Simon came driving down the street on his motorbike and I could actually see him shaking his head. Um, <laughs> But sometimes you've got to do these things because husbands are often wrong. So that's my advice. <laughs> this one is painted Dulux uh, Tuscan Sunset or something like that. And what I actually did was I took uh, one of these flowers off this bougainvillea when it was flowering. Um, and I took it to Bunnings and I got the guy at Bunnings to actually color match it with his little laser scanner thing. That doesn't make sense, does it? Because I just said that I did the... I'm sure I took a Bougainvillea to the Bunnings. No, that's right. I did take a flower to, to Bunnings. And that's right. The guy laughed in my face. I remember now. And he said, I can't scan a flower. <laughs> so, yes, now it's all coming back to me. So I just took the flower to the colour chips and as matched it as closely as I could. And it, yeah, it was um, Tuscan Sunset. Bougainvilliers are funny things, aren't they? Mine, like last week, this was fully out in pink flowers, and now all the flowers have disappeared. And there's a few orange ones, but every time it flowers, 
it's a different color and it just seems to flower there doesn't seem to be any season with it at all but just while you're here come up i'll just show you my front my little front veranda um just got a little seating area over here these guys are just these chairs are just from from ikea some cushions um these ones are actually not these ones but the ones over there are weatherproof um, so I probably can't leave these ones here long term because they will fade eventually but if you can find some really nice weatherproof cushions just to put on your front deck just Simon and I sit here often on a Friday Arvo with a, a beer and a wine and, and relax here um, yeah I love this little guy my mum gave me this succulent and this really cool frilled um, pot that I think she might have had underneath her house forever I don't know, she gave it to me anyway. And this little bougainvillea, which actually has been flowering for months and months now, I love it. I'm trying to sort of grow it in a, um, what do you call it, a um, bonsai, a bonsai fashion. Where did that one come from? This one, oh, this one actually came from a, a student. Yeah, when I, before I was a builder, I, um, ran, I had a music school. I went to the conservatorium and did a degree in classical piano and ran a music school for 10 years. And one of my students, um, gave me gave me this guy as a present and that was that was probably I don't know maybe six years ago and it's still going strong I love bougainvilleas another few little things like house numbers they are really cute always add some nice house numbers I think these ones I got from Bunnings and they were probably chrome and I would have spray painted them yes I did I remember spray painting them and this little doorbell as well it was some kind of tarnished bronze that um, <laughs> that wasn't for you Benj um, but I painted that uh, black as well and a nice a nice door handle and oh, that's probably why I painted it so that they all match and they're all black change up your balustrading so often when I'm pulling up on streets in front of houses to go and meet the clients I look at the front of the house and so often the thing that I recognize that you could immediately do to a home is to add on a little um, a little front porch if you've got a brick low set home you can do a front porch and on uh, if, your, if your little porch happens to be a ground level then you don't have to have um, compliant balustrading you only have to have balustrading if it's over one meter high but if you're on the ground level, I would still recommend that you do balustrading because it, it adds, um, you know, it's, it's just decorative. It's not for safety, obviously, at that point, but it still looks really, really beautiful and worthwhile doing. Or even if you have a post-war cottage um, or any of those older homes which don't have verandas on the front, you can still add a veranda um, with, it's relatively not too expensive to do that and absolutely it's gained back in the value you're adding to a home to do that. So on our house for example um, we've obviously got white white balustrading. Um, this is actually not what I tend to do too much anymore in this in this style. Um, usually I use um, chunkier balustrades that's the little balusters themselves um, because anything too skinny, um, like the traditional 66 mil wide ones by 11 mil, that's what you tend to see on the, the Queenslanders. Um, and that sort of is referencing the colonial style homes a little bit, I guess. So I tend to use a chunkier style these days because obviously I'm building classic American style homes. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's why I do it that way. Obviously all of, all of the advice that I'm giving you in this video is a little bit biased towards classic American style. Having said that, this one here, we've actually used skinny balusters. Um, so they're only 42 by 11, I think. Um, don't zoom in <laughs> too closely because it all needs a good repaint. <laughs> um, but we've done it in this pattern here where we've got two that are a bit um, closer and then a space and two that are a bit closer. It's a little bit prettier, a little bit more delicate, dainty in this pattern, I guess. Um, but yeah, I normally just use 42 by 42 balusters now. And 
this as well. This is the um, the maiden's waist, the lady's waist, or the bread loaf top um, rail. There we go again. Oh, that one's <laughs> lady's waist. This one's lady's waist. Um, so yeah, I haven't since I um, we built this home. I haven't actually used that style ever again. Um, I use a hundred mil by fifty mil. Um, just a flat, a flat piece with no sort of decorative profile in it. I might use this again one day. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway, ramble, ramble, ramble. A another thing with um, balustrading and front decks, this is probably its own separate point, but I'll include it in this point. If you've got an opportunity to do a little arbor or a pergola, for example, coming off your garage, um, that's a really nice way to dress up a house as well um, or a little gatehouse some kind of um, white trim carpentry kind of a thing a, a, a pergola or an arbor <laughs> um, they yeah they look lovely as well Okay, step three is a front fence. Always, 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 I think homes should have a front fence. Now that I've said that, I'm just thinking back to the last two that I've built and they didn't have front fences. Anyway, I, I do think um, that, if, especially if you're going to sell a home, a front fence is a great way to add some value. A little white picket fence like we've done here. Um, they're, they're cheap to build. Um, I see people building solid masonry fences out the front of the house. I don't understand it. They look ugly and they cost a mozza. Um, so picket fences are cheap and so, so sweet and really do dress up the front of a house. Um, this one, we've sort of done this little um, raise in it, I guess. Uh, and again, I have never done that since. Since we've done this one, I usually just do them straight across. But anyway, a white painted fence looks lovely, especially if the colour of your house is not white, then the white contrasts against the colour of your house. And that brings us to point number four, and that is paint. Actually, it's probably point, should have been point number one, uh, because it's point, uh, paint is something that dramatically and immediately changes the look of your home. Um, I tend to just go with the four colours, the colour of your roof, the colour of the main body of your house, uh, and the colour of all of your trim and the colour of your front door. So there's just four, four colours. Traditionally people tended to use maybe five colours or even more than that. They might have picked out um, this top hand, I'll, come, I'll go up here. This um, top rail, you do see it a lot that this top rail is painted a dark colour and then the balustrading is white. It's, that's kind of a little bit more um, colonial um, to do that. And so again, yeah, um, this is sort of more a classic American style that I go for. And so I always do the top rail and the balustrading all just white. Um, another thing that you see a lot is the bottom sill of a window is painted a dark color as well. And then the rest of the architrave is white. But again, I, I, my personal preference is to do the whole thing, the whole thing white. Or if you happen to have black windows, black aluminium windows, um, then a, a white, a white uh, main colour of the house is really lovely. That striking contrast looks lovely. And in that instance, I would still do all the architraves around the windows white as well. actually got three more points also. So it's eight points. <laughs> uh, so I've got eight points, but let's let's just pick the best one. Um, okay, in point five, I'm going to include two things. <laughs> Plants and a mailbox. Okay, there's six points. There's six points. And then point number five is plants. Um, m my opinion is that it looks lovely if you do mass planting. So just pick one style of plant and plant it all out. Um, your eye... It just, I think it just looks sort of nicer and, and cleaner um, if you've just got one style of plant. So here we've just got this um, plumbago hedge. My mum and I actually always disagree about this um, because I, I, I kind of like it a little bit more manicured 
but every time mum comes here, she says, why have you hedged the hedge? Just let it grow, because she loves all the blue flowers. And I love the blue flowers as well, but um, I mean, right now it's kind of in the middle phase, but in a week's time, it's gonna be a jungle. And then it sort of, all the grass dies underneath it as well. So I don't, what do you guys think? Should, should you prefer it uh, more manicured and hedged or should I just let it, should I just let it grow a bit more, a bit more wild so you see more of the flowers? Please comment below. I'd love to know what everyone else thinks. <laughs> um, so that's, yeah, point, point number five. We've got some topiary lily police here as well. Um, and we've also grown some star jasmine up this front gable. It took forever to grow um, all the way to the top, which is fine because I didn't want to have to maintain it too often. But now that it's all the way to the top, um, yeah, I have to get a tall ladder and get up there. It's not very nice <laughs> being up there, but it's, um, I, I really, I love it. And yeah, we've grown the star jasmine up these posts here as well, just to soften, to soften the house. Um, what I've done, don't look too closely at it because I haven't really after this too much it's winter um, but yeah just two rows of hedges is nice and easy this is just a lily pilly and this one is a Japanese box Japanese box they grow really 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 slowly this has taken forever to get them this size um, but yeah point number six is a mailbox our mailbox down there is just one that we got I don't know from <laughs> mr. mailbox or something like that but these days um, we often build them um, we build our mail. I'm saying we, but I mean Simon. <laughs> Simon builds our mailboxes because um, you can't find anything like that at Bunnings or off the shelf, as far as we know. So we often build some decorative mailboxes. Before I've also ordered one from the states as well, but one that we've built into the fence. Um, but anyway, however you can sort it out, um, yeah, decorative mailbox certainly is a cute little feature to add to your house. Anything else you can think of, Simon? Like a chair. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to point out this lovely chair. <laughs> I'm only pointing it out because for a while there, I was going through a phase of basically finding any junk, you know, in the council uh, pickup, um, like on the side of the street or um, op shops and stuff, not op shops, yeah, op shops, just finding old bits of crap, bringing them home with the intention of restoring them. Uh, but then, of course, <coughs> <laughs> Simon's laughing at me at the moment because I never ended up restoring them and they would just sit out the back of the house and we'd have a massive pile. And then our friends would come over and laugh at our stupid collection of old crap. This is one of them. And yeah, I don't think you can actually sit on it because it's not, yeah. I hope, I hope no one's ever sat on that. I should put a warning sign. <laughs> but it's kind of, it's kind of cute. Not safe, but it's cute. Um, anyway, those are my five or six or seven best tips for how to add street appeal to your house. If you want more useful tips like this, uh, may I ask please just hit the subscribe button um, the next video I'm making next week you'll then get a notification of when it comes out thanks guys bye